This is a hedgehog. I, I, it's a, it's just a hedgehog. I bought it for like two euros. It's a cheap hedgehog. Yeah, but I like it. It has a sound of a, like a happy but skeptical face. Yeah, it. Sometimes I take her with me to concerts, and she looks at me and says like, "What the hell?" She, she says she's very skeptical. She doesn't buy shit from me. So, and this is an iPad and the iPad has you know through a bunch of really interesting musical apps has actually developed into a very capable instrument and I have been using one since the first ever iPad the iPad 1 I think I bought one around 2010 I don't remember clearly. It could also be 2009. I'm not very good with dates. Uh, so I'm today. I'm going to talk about this app called Sampler, which is written without the e at the end. So it's S A M P L R, and it's one of the earliest like apps for the iPad for music making, and it's basically a sampler, sound manipulator, sound mangler, looper and sample playback uh, device that is very simple to use because everything you see is on the screen there are hardly any menus other than you know to load samples or load projects and to export samples out of or import samples that's it to play it you don't need any menus you don't you don't have any menus and what it simply like uh, comprise of is it has six sample slots these six boxes you see down towards the bottom of the screen and you can put in samples or recordings of whatever you want into these slots one at a time so each slot can store one recording or one sample it can be a bloop it can be a field recording it can be the sound of your dog whatever it, it's any recording is fine uh, it has to be a, a regular uncompressed format, does not do MP3s. Um, so basically you start out just like here, I start with a new, like you go to this menu, this is the menu for general file operations. Or you also turn running background, which is good if you're not, if you don't have this on the forefront all the time, if you go switch back and forth between apps. It's always a good idea to run it in the background. So it does, if you don't, it will suddenly shut the sound off. And so what I do is I go select new and it's now a new project. What I immediately do, I mean, you don't have to do this, but it's a very good idea because sampler, when you record stuff with it using the onboard microphone or some other microphone, it saves all recordings in the, the folder that it's storing all the sounds in. Which means if you leave something like, I don't know, like untitled project, or it just basically uh, auto names the recordings to the, that, date's, that day's date, and that makes it impossible to find like what recording was done for which project. So what I immediately do after saying new, I go save as, and I rename it my first uh, gear tutorial for example and now every everything that's going to be recorded by sample in the file folder will be named rec my first gear tutorial one two three so it's relative like it then gives you an idea like oh this was for this project so now we have this and i I will actually go to a project that I have, you know, built for this tutorial video. It's already populated with some sounds, as you can see here. The first slots I left blank for, you know, so I can show you how to load in samples. Uh, Sampler has uh, seven playback modes um, that are that can serve different purposes depending on what you need. 
and it has each sample slot can have uh, use one of these playback modes and then each sample slot also has as you can see on the top right corner this xy pad which has like which is linked to these five effects that are this is like a distortion compression this is a high pass low pass filter this is a amplitude modulator you can achieve tremolos or amplitude like really fast amplitude modulation uh, effects with it like ring modulation and then this is a delay and this is a reverb they run in series so the sound goes like the sound i play here goes in here passes through all these effects and then goes goes to the master section which where it gets mixed using this this volume fader here i will go through the controls uh, one by one after that and then goes come to this master section you just see an oscilloscope here and then for the master section you have again the same effects so you can actually like have in total you can have seven reverbs and seven delays and seven amplitude modulations although i don't know how musical that would sound at the end but yeah trying is always encouraged so once you have this your empty slot you go into this other this file folder with this small waveform image on it you click on it or touch it and then it brings you to, you to your sample menu see like i made the mistake of like not naming my project here so it's like rec 2000 it has a date and so it's very confusing at least i find it confusing if you have an amazing memory maybe you might not find it confusing so uh, I can now choose a sample, for example, um, let's see, like MERS Piano 1, which is a piano recording I made in the town of MERS in Western Germany, where the MERS festival takes place. So now I have this sample, do you see the waveform of it? which gives you a good idea what's like more or less at least like dynamics and energy wise what happens where. Now in the first mode here that are like this blue one, it's the slice mode. And as you can see, it automatically slices the sample evenly into eight. It, that's the default setting. You can change it to four, 16, 32 or zero which in this mode does not make really sense to set it to zero. What it does is, let's move it back to eight or let's do it 16. Each slice you can play by touching it. So like, let's do it. Right. There's also church bells in the background because where I recorded this was right next to a church. So, but then you can also do this. You can like, because the iPad is a multi, multi touch surface. You can also do like many sounds at the same time. Right. But then we have, we may or may, may not see this as a problem, but as you can see, the slices are evenly spaced, which does not really correspond to the transients of our sound where you might actually want to start playing. Like you want, we want this note to play, like to align with this. And in that case, you go, you choose this here, which allows you to edit your slice locations. You, you touch these handles here and you pull them and drag them to wherever you want. It's not that easy to be very precise, but then it's not that much of a, I mean, this, this software is not really about precision. It's about playability and ease of use. So like I can drag this here and more like, and I can drag this one here and this here and this here. And this I can get rid of by dragging it off the screen or off the, the area. And here, like that, let's do this. 
and let's get rid of this let's leave this as a, like a double note thing for fun I let's delete this and oops well the problem with the iPad is with sweaty fingers it doesn't work that well it doesn't like sweat so yeah now I have this sliced sample that is sliced according to what I need or want and I can get out of that mode now it's sliced and if I save this document which I should by going to here and go back to the project folder and just tap save now it's saved like this so you have whenever you load this document it will be it will come as it is as I sliced it and now I can play this See, now I can play these notes or chords which are touched by God through a church bell. And this is the church bell on its own because... And then, in this mode, I can also use the effects. For example, I can go to this distortion. It may not be so obvious with this sample, but... See, it's like distorting and compressing, so it gets dirty now. The next effect, I'll turn it, you can turn it on and off, so you can like to leave it at a setting and then turn it off by touching and by, I don't know if I can, if it's off and you touch the XY pad, it will turn on. And the next effect is a, a filter. It's a low pass filter and a high pass. I assume that you know these terms, but basically a filter, it's, it filters, a high pass filter filters out like this. Let me like, this is your cutoff point. It basically filters out everything below that. It passes the high frequencies. And the low pass filter is passes the low frequency, like any frequency below this point. And the resonance, which I adjust by going moving up, this is an XY pad, remember, is this, it's this uh, point, it exaggerates the response of the filter at the cutoff point. So you have this like more, like harsher sound, which I can demonstrate to you. Now it's more or less off the filter. <laughs> So you can like kind of muffles it and then the high pass passes only the high frequencies. So that's the filter. I'll turn it off. This is the amplitude modulation. It basically, there's a secret hand that mod that, the, that turns the volume knob on or, like on and off. Plays and so you can have this tremolo which will probably work really well with reverb and delay which comes after this so so let's turn it off for the moment and then go to our delay or echo the this this the x-axis is delay time the y-axis is feedback, which brings us to, for me, a sh kind of a shortcoming of this app. It is strictly bound to BPM, which you adjust here. Uh, so if you're making like time-based, like that music that strictly adheres to a certain tempo, you might like it, but I actually rather have it without BPM, but unfortunately, sampler, does not allow. There's a new version coming. Hopefully, it hasn't been updated for like in the last six years or so. The 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 creator was busy with other stuff, I guess. But so this means that you can't just like freely change the delay time like continuously, but it will skip. Like it will jump to these values that you see like the highlights. But then the nice thing about the delays, it behaves like a tape echo kind of. So it changes the pitch, which gives you like some creative options. And if you go like if you go crazy with the feedback, it self-oscillates. 
and with like really like it can go really short and you can like you can have like these really like right that's the echo delay you choose what you say call it and the final one is reverb it's for the tech for the technically informed it's an implementation of this uh, legendary free verb algorithm that's freely available on the internet you can just get it and use it in your own software if you if you can program stuff and the x axis is uh, the the time the decay the size and the y axis is the the amount it's not like incredibly high quality reverb but still it 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 works i think for live it works and if you don't like it you can always attach a, like a proper reverb pedal to your ipad if you are very sensitive about your reverb needs so yeah this is basically the first mode and the effects uh let's try like the tremolo and the delay oh not the delay just the reverb let's see While we're at in the first mode, the slice playback mode, we can, we should also cover this transposition. You can basically transpose the sample up or down, either by one semitone, like every time each step, or one octave. Like if you press this plus one here, it's like let's play this now. And by the way, I forgot to say, you may have realized if I touch it, like the Y axis here is volume. This is very quiet. It goes louder, which is a feature that I like very much because it allows you to play it dynamically. You can like jam with other musicians who are like most like generally apart, other than certain musicians who like to be always loud most instrumentalists play use dynamics in their music so you can also go along with them and then transpose it of course transposition in this case means that your recording is also playing back faster so everything that's every every sonic information in this recording will be faster will be playing back faster so if, you, if this was speech you would get this mickey mouse effect like going really high pitched or low pitched Let me actually turn these effects off now. And this is, by the way, a very lo-fi recording that I made with the onboard microphone off the air, nothing like special, so it's kind of dirty, but I like it like that. Especially when you pitch it down, it sounds really nice. And you can go really like extreme transposition. turn the reverb on and you can also like go up and play like this you can like do it. it's a bit fiddly because one I mean one disadvantage of the touch screen is that it's not really like there are no boundaries like it's just glass so you don't have a specific thing to press it's just a graphic it doesn't give you any tactile feedback of like pressing or like I think it's called haptic feedback if you want to be really technical but yeah, you can also go down. And one really neat feature I really use a lot when I'm playing is it's it has a pitch band too. So if you hold this this center uh, figure, whatever, like it doesn't matter which value it is at. Let's actually put it at minus three. I can band the sound. I have to keep like keep pressing. I I can't lift my finger, and I just have to move it. You can just move it. It goes from plus. 2 to minus 2 or like plus 2 to minus 2 or back you can do like vibrato like bending a str string on a guitar it's like bending space time so that's also a very uh, important uh, performance tool at least for me 
And this, this is, this, this part is the volume of the slot, this specific sample, and general volume is here. This is the envelope. You may know this from sound synthesis. So basically this is the attack time and this is the decay time or the release time in this case more. Like it's actually, like the attack time is the time uh, the sound reaches maximum amplitude uh, after you press, like you touch the screen, touch that slice. Like it, now it's instant, but I can do this. I can, it's, it's, and the release time is the time the sample will keep on playing after I move my finger away. Let's so see, it's, it dies out. And if I, I can make it shorter and it won't, of course we have reverb and let me turn the reverb off. So it's, now let's, let's make it maximum. It will basically just play until the end of that slice. Let's try it with a longer slice. It dies out, but it dies out very slowly. But if I do this, like very short, it almost cuts out anything. And if I do it, it's that turn, make it zero, then it's like. So, like if you're if in in that in in certain scenario, you don't want your sound to s s continue playing once you remove your finger. This is the setting you want to go and like set it to zero. Of course, you can like play around with these while performing with this. And then go back to like fast attack. And then there's um, this motion recorder, which unfortunately, or for me, unfortunately, also bound strictly to the BPM and then like when you click on this is your time like time indicator I I almost never use it so I, I don't pay attention to it but it shows you where in the in the bar you're at like it's like it's it gives you a certain indication of time I don't know how but it does I'm sorry you have to consult to other videos but I never use that feature but basically, use, if you use this, there are two record buttons. One is for sound, one is for motion recording. You basically, like, you wait until this reaches the end, and then it starts, and you can, like, record your actions, basically. Only the finger actions, though, not, not like, the effect, they don't get recorded. And this, by recording, I mean the, the motion data, like, the touching. It's the, it doesn't record the sound, it just records my movements. And it's quantized, so it will end at the end of each bar, and then once you stop the recording, it will play. And then, though, you can like mess around with the effects. You can like go... You can transpose it. Like, all controls are still on. You can even like play it. Like, you can play other notes while it's playing back and also play with effects, give it some reverb, filter it, and, and distort it. And turn the effects on or off. And also, one more feature, you can reverse it using this button here. This is this works in almost all modes. I will tell you why it doesn't work in certain modes. So yeah, I think this is good enough for this mode. Let's go to another mode now. And let me clear this. You go to sound the sample menu here and say clear, it resets that slot to its default values. So you can actually uh, go and um, load another sample, which I will do now. I will go up here. Let's load this 
sample that I recorded ages ago and I still use it in my, like a lot in projects. So the second mode is a mode that I'm, the, by the way, personally, the first mode I hardly ever use, but sometimes I do. And the second mode is um, a mode, I'm going to disable the slices because and you can use the slices again here. You can like, uh, they will, your fingers will snap to those. If you want guidelines that you want your finger movements to snap, use them slices. And you can, of course, again, like adjust them to your needs. But I will show you the use of it this without the slice feature because it's more fun. Basically in this second mode here, you use two fingers, like you use pairs of fingers, you can use like one hand or both hands, doesn't matter. And it basically loops the section, the region between your fingertips. Like here we go. And I can of course move my fingers and make the loop shorter. And make it really shorter and then move it. And I can also flip flip my fingers and it plays in reverse I'm sorry for this horrible sound but this is my life this is what you will hear if I were playing on stage so I can move, and I can also do like several and here's one, and here's another one, and here's a third one, and maybe here's a fourth one. So, this is kind of difficult to manage, of course, but why not? You can say if you like, if you practice, sometimes you get you lose contact because it's buggy, but it still works. I think I like it. I use this a lot with it while improvising. And of course, if you have both hands free, you cannot really play with the, the, uh, the, the effects. So you either turn them on in the beginning or just, you know, don't worry about them or just use one hand. Let's actually use another sample to show this because like something that's more tonal. Um, what is this? Is this tonal? Well, it's tonal, but it's not like, you know, let's... There's this bass clarinet and viola. You can even do your, like, custom time stretching. Like, because you're looping a very small snippet of the sound. And if you move it... Kind of does this fake time stretching because it doesn't change the pitch of the audio, and you can do it. And if you want to be like instant, instant Sigur Ross, I would turn the delay on, I would turn the the uh, tremolo on, and I would give lots of reverb. And then, of course. Bend it. This is a mode that I use a lot. And of course, while we're in this mode, there's this feature that I really also use a lot. Let's say like you're playing this, you want this to hold. Like you want this to play, but you don't want your fingers there. You want to, you know, scratch your head or like say hi to a friend or play, do some other musical gesture with it, right? You can touch this, press this infinity symbol, and it just locks it, holds it. And then you have your hands free, you can do other stuff, you can play with the effects, you know, whatever, or you, I mean, you might have other instruments around you. And you have three of these, you can layer, like I can also do this. Press it another time, you see this indicator that you have two frozen uh, playback heads, let's say, and then another one here So this is Now I can also like do a third a fourth one
This fourth one I can't freeze though. This is my live one now. This I play. And I can turn the like the effects off. And I can turn them off one by one. You can only turn them off in the order you turn them on. But I don't think that's a big problem. So now that was, you know, this and one other feature is like it's now looping forward or if you flip your fingers like this without lifting them it loops backwards but you can actually do it do it to play like, the ping pong looping or forward reverse by pressing this right it's now going back and forth see the playhead this is also a feature that i use a lot especially in the smaller thing like, It also helps you to get make your loops more seamless if you experience clicks with really like complex samples sometimes you can get you know your loop points are not that even so this fixes that because it goes back and forth it doesn't jump to the beginning it goes back to the beginning this feature let me turn this allows you to actually because this is a unfortunately a bpm base i'm saying unfortunate to kind of give the hint to the developer that he should get rid of it or make it a future like that i can turn every all the bpm things off it actually lets you choose certain lengths that are in sync with the tempo see like i my finger is here in the middle but it is actually playing this section because that's how the bpm or i can like like it doesn't matter how much I move my finger, it will always snap to a interval, a time interval that is in sync with the BPM. I mean, this in this case, if you, you sound if you, if you're playing in a band that like that's pay, playing beat based stuff like with drums, you can actually use this if you know an idea of the BPM. You can't really tap tempo it, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, if you have if you agree with your bandmates about a certain tempo you can use this creatively too and all the, the the transposition and everything works here too so i can i can get like these really crazy sounds if i go really up And the envelope is also, of course, on. And of the attack time. If you want to be, if you want these swells, of course, you can also do these swells manually. Like you can go up, but the attack is, yeah, you, it's your choice. You can do, use both. I actually prefer to do them manually. some Hans Zimmer moments film music it's when when the monster is like lurking and or like I don't know the bad guy is about to do something really bad or the bad man is like I don't know in the bathroom uh, that was the for the sounds for those moments because we think that superheroes never go to the bathroom but they actually do um, and the third mode, which the bathroom topic takes us to the third mode, which has nothing to do with bathrooms, but still. Uh, this is a one finger mode where now, as you may realize, we have an, an extra control here, an extra fader here. The first two are still your regular envelope controls, attack and decay or release. This is volume. Uh, this one is the width of the, um, let me first show you like this is, I'm going to touch a finger here and it will loop a certain section around the, where I touch the screen right? and the width of that I can adjust, you can increase or decrease.
This is somewhat less flexible than the previous mode where you could actually like more or less exactly define which section you were looping, but then it allows you to use just one finger to loop. So you can do this, for example, let me just lower the, like, Well, let's actually load a sample that's not like uh, because there's only basically one like tone here let's 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 go to this one which is a like prepared piano recording so let me this is a quiet recording so i'm going to compress it a bit uh, distorting You can actually do the swells like this. This is one of my favorite modes. It's, I find it very musical and also very instrument-like. You can really play the sample. You can, let's go to another sample now. For example, um, hmm. like this is a voice recording. Let's turn the, the, the distortion off. can also do like yeah this is sound I recorded of a singer Sveta Kunda she's amazing and <coughs> so which like this, this is let me see if there's anything missing from this mode not really no I mean it's yeah and you, you know, the effects are always there like no matter which mode you're using the effects are always like you can always access them use them you know like we can bring some tremolo and some actually use this sound in uh, in the piece in a piece uh, I, we play with the orchestra and Sveta is also singing while this piece is playing and I use her voice to accompany her with this software so I this is all like technically an orchestral instrument now um, the, th the fourth mode is also a lot of fun but I'm going to use that mode with this sample. It's this, the, by the way, all slots are identical. I'm just using one sample slot, but the, I could have used any and they're identical. There's nothing different there. It's just like, this means that you have six samples at the same time that you can play. And let, let's actually go there briefly before going to this mode. Like, let's say I use this locking or holding feature to play this. Let me increase this a bit like this, I lock it, okay? And I lock this one as well, right? And then I go to the fifth sample slot because I know what's loaded. It's a clarinet sample with a lot of like background noise and crackling. And I go to the fourth mode, which is a tape emulation. It basically, you can like screw, like play the sample faster and slower or backwards using your finger but it affects the whole sample like you can't play sections of it and you do this I really like this playback mode. Basically, let's go to it on its own. The transposition feature doesn't do anything here because you actually basically are always kind of transposing or pitching the sample up and or down. Basically, this is the center. Like 
and the center means it's like zero speed playback it's not if if i really if i could precisely place my finger in the center i would basically not be able to play back the sample maybe i can do it now or well, now it's actually playing back really really slow and really low and but if i move my finger to the right it speeds up This is original speed, more or less, and this is double speed, right? And I can also turn a bit of a reverb, maybe a bit of tremolo here. And I can also do the same in the other direction, where in this case it starts from the end and plays backwards. And what's to me amazing about this playback mode is you can still use more than one finger and like play like the same sample with varying speeds like i'll just place my fingers randomly here let's say use it this mode on this sample I will now sample throughout slot 3 which is exactly the same as other samples this is a this is a piano sample again like a prepared piano play chords really weird chords though it's it's almost impossible to play like 12 tone music with this which is amazing because I don't like to play 12 tone because I can't if you can't do something you should hate it like that's a reverb and tremolo again this the fade in because it starts from the end. I can go back to this sound. Three crazy bangs. Basically, this is the mode where you can really like need the sound like dough. You can like really play around with time and pitch. But then you lose the ability of playing certain uh, parts of the sound. But I think that's not a problem. And there's this other mode, this DJ, like turntable mode, you can like scratch. Which I don't really use, but you can. It could probably work with like speech. Yes, like like the, 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 the hip hop producers do. And you can of course like, in uh, with the record, with the turntable, you can scratch the record, but you can only do one, like with here you can do four. <laughs> well, I'm not a particularly, personally a big fan of this mode, but yeah, maybe there might be a use for it. Let's go back to sample slot three where, where we have this tone. Uh, oh no, actually no, I apologize, let's go here. And go to the fifth mode, which is the arpeggio mode. Basically, like an arpeggio in the in the electronic music sense is basically you like it triggers notes that you press one after the other in certain in certain order. It can go upwards, downwards, random. So for this to work, like you can you can put your fingers like you can do this. It's just playing one. Now it's like the, it's alternating between these two. And you can actually change the speed. Now slower. Really slow and then really fast. 
you can also like arpeggiate the same the same sound, which is this weird tremolo. And you can like move fingers in and out, bend it, or you can like use a slice mode. Uh, oh no, you can't. Yeah, yes, you can. Uh, here, like that. Let's remove this slice and like re let's for like really extra precision. Let's get rid of these. Now we have, oops, these four slices. Let's remove these. And I can now like do this. But it's not playing. I don't know why it's not playing. Why is it not playing? Interesting. It has just like had a breakdown on me. Funny, anyway, then it's, it's not playing. I'll go back to the, uh, the original mode. It, it is a buggy application, by the way, because it has been not developed further for ages. There are some bugs and this was probably one of them. It's not my fault. Um, so the, this is the arpeggiator mode. You can use it with any kind of sample. It also like, I'm oh, sorry, let's go to the arpeggiator mode. Like this really abstract sound. This is the sound of a very old elevator in Prague. You can you can go like up and down and down like it's it plays it in the order you press and this is this is random. You change it here. And if you're like into glitchy stuff, like really like extreme sound manipulation and mangling, this is a very good mode. Or we can do it like this here. Let's go to the random mode. Lock it. have this like if you just add like a drum beat to this you have your piece you can like this can even on its own be a piece and I can change the amplitude modulation Filter, transposition, I'm changing it really fast with my fingers, for example this, I, I, I like the arpeggio especially when I'm designing sounds for certain like video art or like dance, it's, it's a very useful tool, it can uh, bring very like creative ideas very easily and the the mode before the the, la the mode before the last mode is up it's basically you it allows you to play your sample chromatically you see that it's it's, it's superimposed the, the keyboard layout here and I can this is C I can basically play a C of course this does not mean that the sample itself is in the note of C it can who knows what what no I, I don't have and an absolute pitch, I have no idea what this note is. <clears throat> but <clears throat> if you record a C, like a, from an instrument, then if you play this, it will be played back in its original speed, which will be a C note. But then you can... Let me actually turn the effects off. <clears throat> So I can play a chord, for example. Of course, the sound itself is a bit dissonant, so it's not really, it doesn't really sound like a major chord, but it is. It's not major enough, but it's trying. So we can also do it with like, let's use this, this, let's use Sveta's voice and play it. There's a gap, so it will not start immediately. You can, what you can do is that you can, of course, prepare your samples before and like cut the ends and the beginnings if you like. You can trim them and then import them into the app, which I will show later. Like. But 
but now I can also do this. This is also, I really like this mode sound. It, it works really well with tonal material, but also not so tonal. Like you can also use this. There's nothing stopping you from using it with an elevator recording from Prague. Where I just like will touch like randomly. Like then you have your like quartet of seriously deranged frogs or ducks. Whatever. You can make these like clusters. It almost sounds like a pitch shifted echo effect. You can of course pitch it down. if you use it with this for example mode with this clarinet recording pitched down And the last mode is, let's show it here. It's very simple, it's the looping mode. There's almost no, like, you just start the looping. I didn't tell you about this main transport control, but I will do now. It's basically, if you have some sort of motion recording going on with some older locks, it will stop uh, if it's like, if this is playing, Let's let's do this. You see, now we have a pause button here, which is there's something going on with this sample, and if I press this, it will stop. If I press play, it will continue. And this is also like this is now in loop mode. This sixth slot here, it's a loop. And if I start it here. This is like one one area, I'll turn it down a bit. One area that this BPM thing shines is you can actually turn non-rhythmic sounds into really interesting rhythmic structures and textures. Like for example, now this voice. And I can also do the same here, for example, like, um, let's see. And now I have this like, if I, if I, if I would, it's possible to sync this with other media equipment. So I, I could have synced the drum machine to this and like program the beat and then I would have a piece that people could dance to, for example. And of course I can also process this. While you're performing, the good thing about this this control, you you just touch it and then you see these controls here. You can stop them. Like only this can stay. It basically functions like a mute that you would have on a mixer or a sequencer. So then I can trigger these two now. 
and I can stop everything here. Which brings us to that master section. It's a, it's a part that I hardly use, but it can be interesting to you know, like the, it affects everything. That's the, the software is playing. So you can actually like filter everything. It's a very popular DJ trick. Swipe out, you can play it also like really musically. That's the master section. The effects are identical, just like the, the pipe effects. Distortion, compression, filtering, tremolo, like amplitude modulation, delay and reverb. They're identical, they work the same way, but they affect everything. So let's, uh, one thing that the sampler, the app is very good at is to record sound from the outside world. Uh, for that, you can use the onboard microphone. Then each iPad or uh, has an onboard microphone for like that's normally used for skyping with people and etc. But it's not a very bad microphone. It can actually be used on stage at if you want to capture something quickly, and uh, like while you like your guitar player is playing something that you want to record and like process her guitar you know, live, you can do it here. Or like a, a singer, like, or whatever, like, or you're in, out in the park and you just want to record some, this crazy bird that's like flipping out and like singing, like, there's no tomorrow. You just record the bird and like process it. And of course, also save it for later. I mean, you, you shouldn't expect like really high fidelity recordings. It's not for that. And of course, because the microphone is here and the sound source is there, like it's in the distance, so this means that there's a lot of things going on between your sound source. So your microphone is not at the source, it's here. So there will be a lot of other, other ambient sound and everything's going to sound boxy or reverby, but that's fine. I mean, for, for live processing on the stage, that's like really fast, it works. And that low fi quality adds a charm, like because you don't want to sound like the actual instrument anyway, that's kind of boring because they will sound better than you anyway, you're recording. So this, like, let's try it. You, for this mode, you can, you have to press this record button and it gives you two options. The first option is record input, which is your microphone or whatever sound input device you connected to your iPad because that are like, you can also hook up an, a sound audio interface nowadays to your iPad. Or it says record mix. Record mix, let's first cover this first. Record mix is interesting. It's basically if you leave one of your slots free, like if you use five and leave the sixth one free, any, any one free, you can actually record what you're playing with the, like, with the sampler into that. So it's basically a very simple recording device. Of course, this means that you lose one slot. You can use five samples at the same time, which is not a big deal, but it's, it, and it's useful for moments where you don't have your recorder with you. But normally, of course, you can always use, use six slots for samples and then use an external recorder to record your um, creation, your amazing masterpiece. Uh, this, quantize to bars, I use it once or twice. You basically quantizes your recording to the BPM and the number of bars. So it, if you stop it, it will stop at the end of a bar which can be useful for capturing loops or rhythmic material. So record input, when I press this, it might actually feed back or it might not, we'll see. Well, it's, it's not going to play back, so it's not going to feed back. It will basically record my uh, incredible uh, insights about this software that you're mesmerized about. So I'm just going to do this record input thing. 
uh, blah blah this is a recording it's not a test because I don't need to test it because I know exactly how this works ah! so sorry for that but you know deal with it uh, so now I have a recording and it's in first mode I can slice this this is now a recording this is not different than any sample I could have loaded into this slot but it's just a recording that I made using the micro uh, the 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 onboard microphone and I think I just bumped the other microphone that's recording my source if you heard a loud thump apologize for that uh, so now let's go to for example the third mode where which is the one finger mode so I press this that's me or I can do this like this weird arpeggio. For example, and I can also do this. <laughs> Ends with a very cute singing by yours truly. And so like this is, you can do this like you can, if this will be, remember that the first remark I made like to save your new set immediately under title. This was saved under rec tutorial 011. So you know that at least at this sample you recorded this while you were playing with this set called tutorial, this project called tutorial. So. It's easy, it makes it easier to locate samples or, so, or to delete them because you should clean this, like it, your, the recordings pile up. So it's always a good idea to clean them after like a certain piece, which you can do either here, you can just like drag this here left and like say delete, or if you want to do like bulk editing, you connect this to iTunes on your computer and then go to the relevant section where you can see the files in each app and then you can copy them to your computer, delete them, put them in folders and etc. So this recording is very simple. It, it's very instant. You just do this. Let's do another one. This is another recording. Oh, and this is, you know, this. And then I can do this and do that. And then I do this. And now I have this really abstract masterpiece that we're going to love. And I can play that. It's actually not that bad. And it's, I mean, it, the, the onboard microphone is really not that bad. So that is that. And what else is left? Let me see. Um, well, the reverse, let's go back. You can always reverse the sample. Standard fair, reversing the sample. Um, actually, I think this is more or less it. Let's go to the menus. Like this is what you can do with this software. Of course, I mean, you should really like, this is something because it's very, actually, at first it sounds complicated. It's actually very simple to use. You can't really break it. You just have to experiment with it and like load your so sounds up. You can import sounds f also f uh, over iTunes or other apps if you like if your iPad set if you know your way around an iPad you will also know that there are like audio editors or audio storage apps where you can like store audio and then import them or export them to and from different apps um, like I you the, let's go through the menus once more here you can define if you're working with BPM based, like tempo based, you can define, you can like, this is the sample now I have. 
you can tell the app how many bars and how many beats long it is. Like you can go, let's, let's say this is two bars and this is important when it's like looping stuff. I never use them, but they can be useful if you like really want to build a set where you can like you're bringing in and out loops that are in sync with each other. And of course you can also change them on the fly, which can also lead to like really creative stuff. Uh, the load sample menu is pretty straightforward. You click on it, samples, and it brings you this list of samples that you have in there. Um, and yeah, you can like, you can just stroke, scroll through them and hopefully if you have meaningful names, you can actually make sense of it and load the right sample. Um, so basically, unless you're like very clear about naming your samples, you don't have uh, loading samples mid concert is can be risky if you're not sure which sound that is. So you, you might want to prepare your sets before or if you're adventurous, you can just do it mid concert. And this demo thing is just has certain demos that you can, I, I don't use, but it, it might be interesting for you to look at them because they have a lot of like, especially they demo these, like this BPM based functionality of the software quite well. And the Dropbox import is basically you go to Dropbox and it's, you know, you, you import sounds from your Dropbox folder, which means that it's, you can also, you know, collaborate with someone like you can, like someone can send you a sample over Dropbox. You can import it directly here. Audio paste is, uh, an, an application that I don't really use and like anymore because it's, it doesn't really work well. Uh, neither is audio copy, but uh, what I like is audio share. If I click on this, it will take this sample and open audio pay share and it will import it here. Right? And it put a dash before it because to show me that it's important. And then I can edit it here. But this is not a part of the sampler app. This is a separate app. So you have, we will have to purchase this too. I like the app. There are other sound editing apps that you can also choose to work with. But I think sampler is compatible with this one and the other, this audio copy paste thing. Uh, let's get rid of that. And let's go to the project, the main menu. And you can obviously get rid of this and make sure you save it before saying new. I can't remember if it asks me if I want to save it. it. Let's see, it doesn't, so it's gone, for example, but that's okay. So always save your set before clicking on new, which is of course a ridiculous thing. This developer should have thought that it's like very simple thing. If you're, you know, opening a new project, it always should ask you if you want to save the old project. So yeah, that's, we hope that this is going to be fixed in the new version that's going to come out like 50 years after it was introduced. We'll see. It's it's basically like the Berlin airport. Um, and the, the, the projects menu is where you your projects are stored. You know, you can have, I have various projects for various, uh, various sets for various projects that I play. Like, in, like this is for the orchestra. This is for this trio called the Liz. And this is uh, something I recorded with a piano. These are my improv uh, projects that I have certain sounds that I can play in different ways like that. And this is, you know, this sound is there. Um, I, I can, these that these I use for improvising and yeah I mean you can basically name it whatever you want and it will be there the demos are also like projects that the, the, the developer uh, made and then they can like sequence these like it's possible to do things like this with this software or I don't know let's see random See, it sliced these beats and it's using this mode to randomly trigger samples. And let's go to another one. It's a pop tune. Of course, I'll stop this because 
there's a problem with this oven. This is like sounds amazing very well, but of course this is not done with this software. All of the sounds were produced beforehand, recorded with like proper equipment and they were imported and played back using this. There's nothing stopping you doing that, but you should prepare everything beforehand, import and adjust, which is fine. I just don't use it that way. It's not the way I use it. And there's not much more about this MIDI clock input, which means like you can, if you have MIDI devices attached to this that send MIDI clock into the iPad, you, you will see them here and then you can sync your sampler to that MIDI clock, which means it will be in sync with your drum machine or whatnot. And that's more or less it. You can also define a general like beats bar length of the project in total, like you can make it longer or shorter. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you for listening and bearing with me. It's a, it's this sampler app. I'll, I'll just like say my own opinion about it. Not pros or cons. It's, it's, it, it has a few bugs, but um, I mean, almost all of the time it works flawlessly and the bugs are not things that really like destroy your performance. And I use it a lot. I use this for almost in almost all my projects, in the orchestra, for when I make music for dance pieces, when I improvise, when I do, you know, it's basically a very useful tool slash instrument for me on stage, off stage, and I just love it. I have been using since it, I think, came out or since my first iPad. And it's also because it's, it's an old app. It also runs on even the earliest iPads. It doesn't really care which operating system you have installed, but you should double check this with the, I don't know if that has changed in the, because I, I have been using this forever, so I don't really know which operating system and I don't operate my up, operating system, update my operating system on my iPad anyway, because I'm afraid because every update breaks something. Yeah, so that was Sampler. Thank you.